I got a call from one of my tenants yesterday calling me a fucking Arab. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It is 7.57 a.m. I've been up since, I believe, 5 or 5.30. I read my book. I showered. I'm on my way to the office. However, I've got to put on deodorant. So I figured, let me come to Walmart, <laughs> get my life together, and I head to the office. A, a busy, busy day today. So you have got to stay tuned. We got some issues with tenants. We got some business problems going on. We got some business solutions. A whole lot happening today, along with some future plans. So stay tuned. Let's get started. And we're in the office. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. The time is, I still don't know how to tell time on this thing. I believe it is 8.26 a.m. We got the coffee ready to go. So first order of business, I'm going to try to prepare a to-do list. I kind of went away with that, but you know what? We're doing a traditional day in the life of a real estate agent, so we got to do traditional things. And then I'll let you know what's going on and some issues at the property, some issues with some tenants, some things we got to solve, some lessons we have learned. That's all coming up. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we have the to-do list. It is prepared. Let me read it to you so you know what's happening. Number one, we're looking up houses for buyers, and I want to briefly talk about this, and then we'll move on, okay? Lately, it's the slow season, right? Uh, you know, when you start September, October, November, December, fourth quarter for real estate is always, always slow, but somehow I always have the best year. This year, however, I have a look. Look at this board right here. Those are all my active clients, right? Unfortunately, they're all investors and the current position of the market, it makes so much more sense to wait. I only have really two active buyers. So I've lately been going through this like panic mode. I'm like, man, you know, I only have like three to six months uh, reserves left depending on how much I'm, uh, I'm spending because I'm buying the second building. That's gonna run me dry, yada, yada, yada. So, you know, as a business owner, as we all worry about these things. And then I say, you know what? I'm not gonna wait up until you know January and then realize, oh crap, I need money desperately. I'm gonna act like I need money desperately now. So the lesson in there is, number one, when you know you sense a slowdown in business, right? Act before it's too late. So I'm acting before it's too late. Now, to be honest with you, with these 11, it's actually 13, I got one over the weekend. Uh, I got one yesterday, not over the weekend. With these 12, 13, whatever amount of clients I have, right? They're all going to buy eventually. And chances are some are going to close before the end of the year and I'm going to be fine. But I don't like to think that way. And this is the lesson for everybody. I'm panicking when I shouldn't be. If you're not panicking and you're a brand new real estate agent, what are you doing, right? I don't mean panic and lose focus. I'm saying panic and take massive action, right? That's the whole point. Now, for me, fortunately, I have a building that's incredibly cash flowing. Like it's, ooh, it's making like... $2,600, $2,800 a month, depending on the month. And for me personally, I keep half of that. So I got guaranteed $1,400 coming in after everybody's paid. I'm about to buy the second building. I own a little bit less uh, a percentage of, but I'm going to keep about $800 from there. And then I got the, you know, the money from YouTube, from the Patreon, all these things. I have other sources of income. I'm going to be fine. I want to be better than fine. I want to put myself in a position when the market crashes. I want to win. So that's why I'm really pushing to get as much cash in my hands as humanely possible because opportunities are just around the corner. And I'll be damned if I don't capitalize on this uh, market because the last down market, I think I was 12. Number two, I've hired an attorney and I'm spending $1,500 to draft an operating agreement because the second seven unit I'm buying, I'm buying as a partnership, which means I need to have all the legal side taken care of so nobody could come after me and that way i have complete control of the situation and it's not you know he say she say type of situation so i gotta fill out this operating agreement like information sheet the llc yada 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 which i just got the email that it was fully approved so we're all good second now we're gonna take delivery of floors today number four we're gonna go uh, we have an 11 a.m showing and we have an 11 30 showing for multi-family we're gonna buy spray paint and color in parking spots because I got a call from one of my tenants yesterday calling me a fucking Arab and getting upset with me because I told him if he's upset that we don't have assigned parking spots, he could pay for one and I'll give him a specific one. He could park, I'll, I'll draw him beautiful lines and he won't have any issue. He got very upset. He was upset in the beginning. He was an older fella. And to be honest, I didn't want to dis deal with the disrespect. And this is a great lesson. If you're young and you're doing business, a lot of people are going to, they're going to test you. Okay. Do not be too nice. You cannot be too nice. I was always nice to my tenants. However, they're, they're starting to forget 
that could also be mean. So that's when I had to go mean mode and he just couldn't handle it. And obviously he went disrespectful. And then uh, his wife texted me and called me back. Hey, we were so super apologetic. He gets like this sometimes. We didn't mean it. Da, 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 da. That being said, this is the second tenant to complain about assigned parking spaces. Now, this is a lesson I learned in the future to avoid any and all confusion. All tenants are getting an assigned parking spot. So we don't have to worry about this ever again, right? As you go through the journey, as you invest, as you, you know, become a real estate agent, as you do transactions, you will be able to spot problems that you had in the past that you can nip in the butt in the beginning and you will never have issues again. This guy actually ended up knocking on the new tenant's door. Like, hey, you know, move your car, da, da, da. Thank God the new tenant didn't open the door. It could have been a disaster. So I simply let the existing tenant know that new tenant is paying significantly more than you. So if you got a problem with that, then you can go. And I get your place rented for a lot more with a lot less uh, headache, right? So, you know, we're politicking. That, that's what it is. But what I'm doing is I'm going to go buy spray paint. And I'm going to literally put numbers on all my parking spot. And I'm going to assign it to each tenant and call it a day. And speaking of tenants, I got one guy who refuses to park where he's supposed to park. So I give him some warnings. Again, I was nice. Don't ever show weakness. You got to be ruthless, rude, and you just got to get straight to the point, right? Don't be too nice. You ain't got to be disrespectful, but don't be too nice. I let this guy go a few times. And then yesterday, my contractor calls me. Hey, man, that car's still parked in the spot. I can't get my work done. He's going to get shit all over his car. I'm like, what car? Not the red one, huh? He said, yep. So I had to text the guy. I'm like, look, if I see that car, if I see it, my contractor see, if a tenant sees that car parked there for even one minute, I'm calling the tow truck. If you're going to buy investment property, folks. Don't ever over leverage yourselves because then the tenant can really dictate how things work. Because if you're so afraid of your tenants moving out or not paying rent, then you can't enforce the law. Now, if one tenant parks wherever they want, what's the point of me getting spray paint and doing assigned parking spots? It don't work that way. Back to the to-do list. Uh, we got film content, post TikTok, post TikTok, post Instagram, and update YouTube titles. Lately, I've discovered a new world that about content creation, about marketing, about you know SEO, all this stuff. And I realized I have been doing my YouTube all wrong. We have been half-assing it this whole time, and somehow you guys keep watching. So thank you so much. That goes to show the content is good. I just need to be able to make it more, you know, like you know, ah get your attention and get you in the in the groove of things. So that's what the plan is. Let's start first by filling out this operating agreement, getting it out the way so the attorneys could get to work. For the second time in my life, I just applied for an EIN number. If you don't know what that is, that's a entity identification number or something like that along those lines. Oh, employer identification number. It's also referred to as a form SS4. At some point, your real estate business or investments are going to require you to have an LLC or corporation, which is going to require you to have the SS4 form, which is your employer identification number. This is how this is like basically the social security number for your business, right? This is your, the identity of your business, according to the IRS. It's very important. And a lot of attorneys will just say this, you know, they'll do this for you for like $500, but you don't know it takes three minutes takes three minutes. I just filled one out. So now we have to go to Chase today, start a business account, apply for a credit card, and then pay the $1,500 that that uh, attorney is charging me on the LLC's credit card interest free. So that way it does not have to leave my pocket cold hard cash. Upcoming payment 1015 payment due. See, ladies and gentlemen, once you start running a legitimate business, you got invoices to pay, okay? And Jorge doesn't come here because he's a good friend of mine. He comes here because he has a business as well. Anyhow, so that's one thing we gotta do is pay this damn thing because I'm always a day late because uh, I forget. I'm a, Sometimes I'm a couple days late and I feel horrible. So we're gonna get it paid ASAP. When you're looking at your schedule and what you should do at what certain times, I always suggest doing what you can do now. For example, I have 10 things on this list. Uh, the one thing I could do right now is look up houses for buyers. Everything else, uh, it actually has relies on me on going somewhere or waiting on something, yada, yada, yada. So let's get the things that I can get done right away. And then as the day progresses, the rest of the to-do list will be completed. All right, let's see if any gems have hit the market so far. I forgot to mention, I was panicking about not having clients. I got a listing <laughs> just hit it on the market yesterday. So we, we're good. As you all know, I don't do automatic searches. So when I say look up houses for my clients, I have these manual searches or all the criteria already in place. And I simply sit here, I look at them, I make sure everything is in line. If I see anything that's good, I send it through. If I see anything that's bad, I don't. And this is a great way for me to be like, okay, I haven't checked in with this client for a long time. 
while I'm looking at pastas farm, let me message them saying, hey, I'm still looking. It's just haven't seen anything yet. That's very important. If you have a if a buyer, if you have a buyer and you haven't found anything that fits their criteria in a while, maybe they're very picky. Send them a message every few weeks. Hey, I haven't forgotten about you. I'm still looking every day. It's just the market's really tough. I have a few clients that are looking to flip and I had to message them earlier this week. Be like, hey, the market is just not there. Even though I told them like a month or two ago, like this is not a really good time to flip. Um, I had to text them like this is the worst time to flip. You are at the peak peak and you're about to so what we cannot do is buy property at the peak peak. Even if you get it below market, if it goes, you're going to be down bad, right? So we have a few clients just on pause right now, but that doesn't mean I'm going to stop looking because I want to keep my eye on the inventory, right? If I see it climbing, I see a certain property that's a good buy, I can just keep an eye on it. If it's still on there for 30 days, I'll know it's a good buy. We could just move on it. <clears throat> and when I'm looking up houses for these buyers, you know, if I see a deal, I have to run the numbers, make sure that's where working with investors is like, it's not as easy as, oh, this is a three bed, one bath, send it to them. It's okay, does this make money? Is there enough profit here? And it appears there might not be enough juice, enough meat on that bone. Let's see, closed last six months, half mile radius. You guys already know the drill. If you don't, please ask me in the comments. So let's say mindful remodel, I might be able to get 280, they asking 225, you see real quick, there's not enough meat on that bone. Even if I was to get it for 200, right? Requires, let's say $40,000 worth of work and I could sell for 280. Imagine the market crashes 20%. Now it's only worth 240. I'm breaking even. All this work, I just broke even and my money's locked in. 180, I'd be very comfortable because I like the $100,000 spread. Here I go again on my own. Going down the only road I'm living on. Like a drifter, I was born to be alone. But I made up my mind. I'm not going no more time. Boom. Here I go again on my own. Okay, we're going to listen to that song today. All right, so all of these are hot garbage. I have a client that only will look at end units, which really limits my pool of options here. And one word of advice, when you're sending a client a property, don't assume they're gonna check their email, text them. Hey, check your email, I got something for you. So I just have one right now, and it's a great way to touch base with clients. So I need to stop the camera so I can text them, hey, I got something for you. The time is 9.42 a.m. in the morning, and a lot's already been done. Uh, coffee's already been drank, and I'm super hyped up, ready to rock and roll. We just finished up. Looking up houses for buyers. Okay, so if Jorge is the videographer and editor, why am I wearing headphones? I'll explain. Because he is very expensive. His time is more valuable. So what I like to do is not have him edit things that I don't want. So I have to go through, blade to all the things I actually want edited so he could come in and put his on that bad boy. So that's what we're doing. See the timeline? You see Jorge. So he's going to be chilling for about five minutes while I get to work. Just got off the phone with the wife of the tenant who called me the Arab. Uh, and you know, as a landlord, you got, as a businessman, you can't take nothing personal. Okay. Thank God. Social media has built very thick skin. So I don't, I don't need to get emotional. Da, 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 right. All I need is a little bit of respect. And you know, she showed that respect by calling me again today, just to apologize. I was like, you know what? That's fine. In the future, this is not how we handle complaints. We're going to go ahead up to our 11 AM showing. We're showing a duplex and then we're showing a three unit. And then we're going to go up to my unit because <laughs> they're all in the same area. All right, folks, we are here in the field. I got the client here. Also social media sensation for us. Um, we're here for a three unit. You could see the listing agent is going to accompany the showing. And afterwards, if he's down, I'll show my building because it's literally two minutes away. <laughs> all right, ladies and gentlemen, we're back at Home Depot. You know what's going on here. I have to buy the spray paint so I can paint down the numbers for the parking spot. Ladies and gentlemen, we're checking in. You've met Gabriel a bajillion times by now. It is, what time is it, 2.35? And the last time you saw me was a long time ago because I completely forgot to record. Basically, we left that three unit show, went to Home Depot, got some paint. Let me show you. Okay, but on the way, check out this brand new kitchen we just got. All courtesy to Sierra Renovations. So check this out. Boom, boom, boom. Basically, I got some spray paint. Give everybody their assigned parking spots so that we don't have any more further issues. I have to get all this flooring, which is excess flooring. We gotta get it downstairs. And I'm out of breath because I haven't eaten today and I'm out of shape. 
You know, I'm supposed to be a fat landlord and I'm out here working, but it's okay. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen. So we're here at the building, got some bad news. Here's the situation. They told me my floor is supposed to be delivered between eight to 5 p.m. So I've been hanging around here between eight to five. I even went, he went out of my way to come back and stick around this location. Turns out nothing's coming to that. And I had a feeling, thank God I called ahead of time. Otherwise I would have wasted two hours of my life. It's currently 3.35 p.m. And the day's mostly over and there's a lot I didn't get done. <laughs> So I need to, I don't even remember my to-do list to be honest with you, but I need to figure out what I can what I can get done, which is my TikTok posts. Which, that, that right there is three of the things. I, I realized I can't start a business checking account for reasons I need to make an appointment. You don't just walk in, those take about an hour to do and you need some documentation. So that's gonna be held a little bit behind. It is what it is. We still had a tremendously productive day. We painted the, the parking signs. Now maybe I gotta get to my office and uh, retitle all those YouTube videos. And what I might do is message, email all the tenants because you want everything in writing and let them know, hey, this is your assigned spot, da, 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 da. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to end the vlog here. If you enjoyed it, please like, comment, subscribe. And if you made it all the way to the end, you know, show some love, put parking spots in the comment section, right? And let me know that you made it to the end. And if you did, listen, I'm going to tell you this one time, the Patreon link is in the description for $10 a month. I get on a weekly call every Thursday, 10 a.m. Central. You could come on to Zoom call and ask me anything you want or listen to other people asking me questions. It's the cheapest coaching you're ever gonna receive in your entire life and it's the best quality. I'd be jumping at the bits and I'm keeping it cheap to keep everybody involved. So, hope to see you there. Otherwise, see you next week.